Okay, guys, I'm here today with the King Gordon Ryan. Huge honor for me. Right after the ADCC, pretty much like one month after the ADCC, that he pretty much killed everybody. And guys, Gordon, for the first time ever, he's shooting an entire structure all about leg attacks. And if you watch the ADCC, this was the thing that called the most the attention of Gordon. There were some matches of you against Roosevelt and against Nick Rudd that I was watching from outside, and I was like, Man, this looked like a fake match. It was so it was so fast and so so quick. And we were talking about like two guys that are the best of the best of the best. And even though you were able to apply your your moves and uh, with such an, an efficiency, and I think everybody is waiting for this instructional. Yeah, my, the, my whole thing with uh, with ADCC was uh, conserving energy was energy expenditure and conserving en energy over the weekend so that I could get to Andre fresh because I knew Andre's you know known for his strength and his cardio. And that was likely to be a very tough match. And in the heavyweight division, uh, the easiest way to get tired is by either wrestling guys who are 50 pounds heavier than you um, for long amounts of time and carrying body weights for long amounts of time. Um, so going into these, into these heavyweight matches, the easiest way to keep body weight off of you when you're in bottom position is by using some kind of Ashigarabmi leg entanglement so they can't come onto you and crush you um, and get chest to chest. Um, so a big part of this camp was uh, was to entangle the legs, keep weight off of you, and then ultimately either go into leg locks or use the leg entanglements to sweep and to get to top position. So I think we did a pretty good job of that in a lot of those matches. Yeah, no, and I think like uh, ADCC is the type of tournament that, that I think that was the, the biggest concern. Like because sometimes the match goes crazy long, especially when it's the finals. And then you, you would fight against Andre like very yeah. fresh in the... But, but you were able to manage that like super well and the, and I think Hugh Hook was a huge part of that because two matches were like against Nick Rod and against Roosevelt. You were able to finish the match very quick and, and, and save all your energy for... Yeah, for the... I, I, think we, I think we did a good job with that. You know, the, the semifinals match the second day was against Roosevelt and then, then the finals match was against Nicky Rod and uh, those two matches were under two and a half minutes combined. Um, and I was fresh for Andre ready to go. So I think we, uh, we handled that well. Yeah, no, and I love the fact that uh, the very first instructional that John launched was the leg attack one. And then from there to today is almost like a five years or four years gap. And uh, and I think everybody is waiting for your instructional about leg leg attacks and you know, leg locks and this and that. So Yeah, so obviously I have some we have some new stuff. There's some uh some stuff that uh you know that you know I've invented and we've invented as teams um, that I'm gonna put in here. Uh, I don't believe that John put 50-50 in his one, um, so mine will include 50-50 as well. Um, and uh, it's always a little bit different approach between me and John. John, you know, has, uh, has, a, has his style of teaching. I have my style of teaching. So uh, I, I think that, you know, people will enjoy both of them. Uh, but, you know, I'm going to give, you know, what, you know, my iteration of, of what we do as far as leg, le uh, leg attacks go. And, um, you know, we're going to go through all of the offense. We won't go into breakdowns um, because I did a lot of, like, uh, uh, you know how to break someone down from a standing position with Ashi Grabi and X guard in my Simpine instructional and my guard instructionals. Um, so we're not going to go into much of you know how to control people standing and breaking them down. We're going to go into more. It's more will be will be more about controlling legs on the floor, moving from Ashi Grabi to Ashi Grabi, uh, and being fluid through the positions, controlling legs for long amounts of time, and then obviously breaking mechanics and how to finish people on the legs. Yeah. One thing that I'm super, super, super curious is like, how you make the decision to go to the leg attack? You know, first of all, the match against the Roosevelt, how did you make the decision to, I, I'm going to hit the leg attack yeah. instead of like a, so... That was actually planned. I was actually drilling this in the locker room because um, he, he stands very upright. And whenever you pull on his head, he, he pulls back and away. And whenever the upper body pulls back and away, the legs are available. Okay. So my whole thing was to come out, start pulling on his head, heavy collar ties. And then as I get a pullback reaction, he's standing up and he stands with very wide feet. So as he's standing up with wide feet, it's a pretty easy thing to pull the collar and then reach for a leg. And then the head's pulling up and away. Legs are available. He can slide in and then go and Tasha Garami. Um, so it's a basic dilemma game between the upper body and the lower body. Whenever the upper body pulls away, for example, if you're going for a triangle, and the upper body pulls out of the way, the guy slips out. The only way that he can posture out of a triangle is to bring the knees forward and the hips forward and give you the legs and the legs will always stay behind. So yeah. it's always a dilemma game between the upper body and lower body submissions. I got it. No, and the, we talked about that in the other video as well, but I think like a huge difference between you and everybody else that people don't see, like that they see you as a crazy strong guy and they think that's all about conditioning. It's like all these techniques and systems that I shared the math a lot with you when you come here. And my mind is always blowing by how much you know jiu-jitsu. Like, yeah. It's just like unbelievable.
and uh, that's most of it. <laughs> yeah, no, because I think many times, because conditioning everybody can get, everybody can get strong, yeah. but the actually technique part of the 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 whole game is like where you. Yeah, there's a there's a great quote from John where he says, uh, "True strength resides in technique," and uh, that's a very very true quote. Um, you know, you, you can be strong, but having sticky grips and being able to hold on to someone for long amounts of time has very very little to do with strength. It has to do with precision of gripping. Um, and so everyone asks, you know, when you get to hold the legs, like guys try to rip out and move away, and you just feel like so sticky. Like, you know, Wagner was asking me, you know, like, man, I feel like when I put like Ashigaramis on, and then guys just like rip out or kick out and explosive guys move away, like how are you so sticky? And, you know, that's a big thing is like the initial stickiness, the initial control. So you can control the guy through the initial explosion and then go into an actual heel hook and get your attack going. Yeah, no oh, man, that, that's incredible. And I always think about Jiu Jitsu as like a technique, a mindset and conditioning. And for you, I would say that technique is like yeah. the biggest mindset is like you have the mindset that I never saw in any sport. And the and the conditioning like is considering yeah. that it's true. It's definitely important, but it's, it's the smallest part of the, of the yeah. equation. Oh, boy, but can you show any concept here about the heel hook that you think would be interesting for everybody to see just so they have an idea of what's coming in? Yeah, so um, going off of this uh, this heel hook that we hit at ADCC with, uh, with Nicky Rod, for example, where when I go for an inverted heel hook and he wants to roll in this direction, everyone knows that, okay, now you're in cross Ashigurami. My opponent wants to roll in this direction, and if he rolls in this direction, he can either keep rolling and roll out, or he can take your back like Felipe Pena did to me two, uh, two times in a row, okay? So I wanted to avoid this. The best way to avoid this is by going into inside Ashi, all right? Now, when you go to inside Ashi, that requires you to have strong outside heel hook breaking mechanics, uh, breaking mechanics, which most people don't have, which is why most people don't use it. But it's very important to have strong inside heel hook mechanics and strong outside heel hook mechanics so you can play these two positions off one another. If my opponent is turning towards the camera, it's the easiest thing in the world to put a heel hook in with an inverted heel hook. But if Bernardo goes to roll away from me, we just go in, we control his toes, and we take him to the center of our chest. So when he goes to make that roll through, he can't now I or else he'll second. break his own leg. Now he wants to continue rolling in this direction. And as he does so, I just make a pass from cross Ashigarami to inside Ashigarami. So now when he goes to start rolling in this direction, he exposes his own heel to an outside heel hook. Okay, and now if he continues rolling in this direction, I just roll through with him and I break him. What Nicky Rod did was actually smart. He realized, man, if I keep rolling that way now, I'm gonna get my own leg broken. So he tried to turn back towards me and he tried to tuck his heel in towards my hip. The problem is with the configuration of the legs with the inside Ashi, my legs can always turn his knee out and away and expose the heel. So now when he goes to turn towards me, he'll break his own leg because my legs reaped across his. And now it's the easiest thing to expose the heel, start putting pressure on, and we ultimately got to a finish with Nicky Rod here. He didn't try to roll, he just tapped right away. But Can you push it there just so I feel yes. exactly what's the thing? So once we get here, we want to ultimately go belly down, we yeah. want to tighten everything up. Oh my God, man. And now we lock everything in, and we're ready to go in. And before even, the, even this pressure here is yeah. insane. But before the hands even come up, like just, just locking the Ashigarami in place, you oh feel like you're God. almost on breaking <laughs> That's point. That's crazy. And then when the chin and the hands connect, you, you feel like if, any, if I move at all, you're going to be breaking half from here. <laughs> That's crazy. I wish there was a way to press a button, everybody can feel. Because it's not only the heel, like, it's a, it yeah, felt like, like my leg would go in. Yeah, like just feel like your whole leg's going to explode. So the idea here is we oh go, my God. We, go from, we go from cross Ashi. We want to hit an inverted heel hook because ultimately the inverted is mechanically stronger than the outside heel hook. But everyone knows, you know, what it, people have seen us do leg locks now. They know, man, he goes cross Ashi, roll, roll, roll. So as he goes to roll, we go in, we just grab the toes and we take his leg center chest. And now as he goes to roll, that facilitates a V grip, which makes it easy to pass the leg across. Now, if he continues to roll, he just exposes his own heel. In Nicky Rod's case, he turned towards me before I had exposure of the heel, and he brought everything in, and he tried to start heel slipping. But because of the configuration of my legs, when he goes to put his foot on the floor or pressure into me, I can always expose that heel. And now from here, it's an easy thing to either roll him through a second time, or if he continues to turn, we just go in, we lock everything up, and before I even lock my hands, hey! he's already on breaking point, <laughs> ready to break. <laughs> That's insane. Oh man, that's crazy. No, and I love how you, because I think what everybody want to see as well is what goes on your mind exactly as you yeah. did here. You know, like uh, if it goes here, do this, if it goes there. No, that's incredible. And guys, this is one piece of the puzzle, right? Because this is one yeah. position. Right? And so this, this whole mindset thing we're eventually going to do, 
2022, my evolution. Uh, uh, the ADC your, analysis yeah, as well. exactly. My evolution, your revolution, the ADCC analysis. So this whole mindset of what I'm thinking about and why I'm doing one move versus the other will all be in that as well. But this is just a good leg lock example that you know we can show um, in terms of moving fluidly through one ashigrami to the other and why I would use one in leg entanglement versus the other depending on my partner's defensive reactions. Got it. Oh, Gore, one thing that I'm getting really impressed about leg locks in general, and I think we have an example in the other room over there, like Giancarlo. Giancarlo, when he was here in Boston, he was horrible defending leg yeah. attacks. Then in one year, he's not only defending, but he's attacking. So yeah. I get a sense that whoever watches you teaching can get good at this pretty quick, yeah. probably. Yeah. Um, if you if you envelop yourself in it, and if you start in leg locks, and if you actually try to learn it's like you know if you're if you're just the guy who's caught up on just defending leg locks i don't care i just want to defend that's going to take longer but if you envelop yourself in leg locks and you let people put you in heel locks you let yourself end up in these entanglements uh you can pick it up pretty quickly i mean if you uh, assuming you know what you're doing you know what your what your goals are trying what goals you're trying to accomplish um so yeah it, it definitely takes a while to master but to get competent enough to hang with good guys who are good leg lockers uh it comes relatively quickly and i promise the last question Besides having like a source of information, which for the users is going to be like the instructional, what else should they do? Like specific training, positional training, regular training, yeah. or starting the 50 feet? I don't know. What, what else? So a lot of things we do, we start in situations where we start in 50-50. And now, you know, the goal is either to get to a back take or a guard pass or, you know, primarily get to leg locks. We'll start in cross ashi, like so. We have a leg controlled. And then we'll use, we'll go into offense if he escapes you know, or gets a good position or leg locks me, we switch positions. If I leg lock him, we switch positions. So we do positional rounds where we start in 50-50, cross Ashi. Um, you can, we can do positional rounds where we start in mutual Ashi. Like so, we both have access to outside heel hooks. This is basically the 50-50 of outside heel hooks. And we just do these positions where you start in these positions and you spend hours and hours and hours doing live rolls from these positions. Because if you're in a, you know, a six minute match and you're rolling with your buddy, 90% of the role is going to be an open guard, top or bottom, right? That, 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 that's, that's what I'm thinking and, here. And most guys will try to avoid leg entanglements. But if you start in these positions and you're like, oh man, now someone's attacking my legs, it gives you the ability to hide your own feet while attacking your partner's legs. The biggest thing that people have issues with is they get so over uh, overzealous attacking their partner's legs that they leave their own feet exposed and they get counterlocked oh, as yeah. they're trying oh, to yeah. attack. Oh, yeah. So there's an art to being able to hold, to hide your own feet while attacking your partner's legs. And ultimately, that's what we need to do. We need to keep our feet in, in relatively safe positions while our yeah. partner's feet, our yeah. feet and legs are in relatively exposed positions where we can go into the attacks and they can't go into the attacks in the time available. Wow, oh, man, that's incredible. Yeah. And guys, I think all you guys can all see how it's not all his strength or, or he, he, everything is on his mind, you know, like, and he knows like exactly what he has to do over here, over there, over there, over there. And the idea is to, give it to you through the instruction so i hope you guys enjoy it it's going to be at bjjfanatics.com very soon maybe by the time you're watching it's already there and uh, thanks so much Gordon. It's Thank amazing. You. thanks guys Thank you. please help me out to grow my youtube channel just click subscribe and to watch more videos just click under see more videos i hope you enjoyed bjjfanatics.com use the promo code youtubefaria to get 10 percent off any instructional video improve your jujitsu faster